Berkshire County is ranked in the bottom third of Massachusetts counties in social, economic, and health factors, with a higher rate of obesity, smoking, excessive driving, motor vehicle crashes, and teen births. Mass in Motion is a statewide initiative that promotes healthy eating and active living, and they're aiming to address and prevent the obesity epidemic in Clarksburg, North Adams, and Adams, Mass. Amanda Chilson is project coordinator for Mass in Motion in Northern Berkshire. Thank you so much for coming on board today and talking to me, Amanda, about the different plans that you guys have in action. Let's start with the first one, with helping kids in a rural area walk to school. That almost seems like it would be at odds with each other. How do you guys make that work? Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you very much for having me. I really appreciate it. I love any opportunity to talk about, you know, what, the work that we're doing in North Berkshire and Mass in Motion itself as the initiative is an amazing opportunity to help with the health and wellness and the obesity epidemic that's across the state and nation. So specifically, Safe Roads to School, um, one piece that we were told as we started Mass in Motion was to really gear it towards your community. You know, what does your what are your community needs and what is your surrounding environment that you have to work with? So being a rural area for Clarksburg, for instance, um, very very, you know, it's back roads. So um, one thing that we're looking to do is they've created some trail systems behind the school um, in the wilderness, in the woods. And so one, you know, a few years down the road when they're actually all complete, the possibility of having children walk to school in a group together, you know, some walking school buses that would come through the trails leading up to the school. But they were actually the first out of those three communities to um, jump right into biking to school. And these would be well lit. I mean, because when you think of right. in a rural community and these exactly. trails in the middle of nowhere, exactly. they would be safe. They would yeah, be I mean, what would happen is when they walk to school, it would it would both be during the day, you know? So we wouldn't have to necessarily worry about the lighting th to start, you know? Um, definitely if they're getting used more and more so, and that becomes a community demand, then maybe we'd look into it. But um, when they walk to school, there'd be parent volunteers. There's a really neat uh, program. It's a walking school bus through Safe Roots to School. and. Um, they have parents or 7th, 8th graders that would kind of lead that walking school bus. So you'd have a mix of people walking and it'd be in a larger group. And I guess um, it promotes that healthier overall look at you walking more often and yes. being healthier, not just in your eating habits, but also right. getting more exercise, which surprisingly is harder in a more rural area to really embrace that. Why is that? Absolutely. I think the tough part is the resources, you know, that are available. Um, and I think the the concern as well you know really having that be in the forefront so walking and biking necessarily you know are in the forefront for you know North Berkshire we're moving in that direction but we, we were lacking some of the infrastructure some of the bike lanes the signage um, and just the know of the drivers you know I think that because that used to be the way and then there was a culture shift and driving became the number one mode of transportation we're trying to bring the walking and biking back um, and so really it's also it's shifting the culture back to that so it's helping people's mindsets their behaviors think of there's going to be more bikers and walkers on the road you know some more traffic coming devices that are um, effective and low and low cost as well that are so some things that we need to think about um, in the rural areas for sure so you're not even just talking about the outside you're now bringing the focus to nutrition and exercise inside with a big proponent being the nutrition mm -hmm. and having local foods how is that going are you getting a lot of different companies on board or farms that are being able to provide that fresh food and produce produce and organic um, fruit and vegetables? Yeah, absolutely. So um, it's definitely a mix. I think, again, working in a rural area, we have a limited amount of farms, you know, we have to think about. We have to think about transportation as some of the food that's coming to the schools is already being driven from, um, you know, a far out place. And also thinking about the budgets that the school have to work with. And being a smaller school, the budget they have to work with is also a little bit smaller. Um, so again, it, it's, it's accessing the resources that are available. So we do have some farms. So what we're working with first is really small steps, is how can we bring just some local foods and whether it be an apple once a week, whether it be um, local foods twice a month. So our schools actually joined a partnership with Massachusetts Farm to School, um, and it's called Harvest um, of the Month Campaign. And so what they agree to do is serve two local foods per month, and each month they highlight a, um, some produce. So I think for the month of November, it's apples. So twice throughout this month, they serve local ask, um, apples from Yeski's Orchards, which in, is an Adams Mass. And they work one-on-one -on -one with the farmers so that they work about, you know, the payment plans, the procurement plans, and, you know, the transportation, whether the orchard delivers it directly, whether it, the distribution services that they're using, you know, swing by and pick them up. Um, so there's definitely, I feel like, a lot more loop, yeah, loopholes to kind of jump through in, you know, in the rural communities for sure. Now the kids, are they as on board with this? Because let's be honest, kids, if choosing between a candy bar and an apple, probably aren't going to choose the apple. How are yeah. the kids' reaction to kind of 
this new way of thinking. Absolutely, it's, it's definitely a mix. Um, and talking to some, you know, some of our schools and throughout North Adams, Adams and Clarksburg, they've seen actually the school um, lunches decrease of the amount of children actually mm -hmm. buying the school lunches. Um, you know, because they had to kind of work in the regulations and bring them into the lunches immediately. There was no kind of simple transition where the kids could begin to experiment and try those foods. It was like, okay, we're jumping in, whole grain this, whole wheat that dark green, you know, all that kind of thing. And a lot of it you have to acquire a taste for, especially if you haven't had them in a, in a long time or ever. So um, the, we're trying to, you know, kind of take that simple avenue of doing it. But what we've found really helps is to have a farmer come in, is to really connect the kids with the farmer, whether they go to the farm or the farm comes to them, um, and have some type of experience and do some type of project with them and sample the foods then. Then we've what we did is we served those same foods that same day at lunch. And the kids were ecstatic because now they know the farmer, they've seen the food, maybe they've even gone to the farm and they just are so amazed that it's right here in their hometown. I know you guys are trying to tackle obesity among children, which is overall having healthier children in general. What are some goals that you have and some ways you're going to go about accomplishing that? Sure. So specifically through uh, Mass and Motion, we have a few other plans that you know we're hoping to work that way with. And one of them is um, working with some of our convenience stores. As um, many people in our population utilize the convenience stores as their main source of shopping or even stopping in for a quick snack. But that quick snack can be three, four hundred, five hundred calories. Um, and then the drink that goes with that snack. So one of the one of the things that we're looking to in this is really in the initial stages, um, this plan specifically, is work with healthier options, whether it be working with what they have and helping to create incentives for people to encourage them to really want to buy that. Because I think sometimes when it's new, having that external incentive to say, hey, if I buy so many of these, I get a gift certificate or whatever, all starts to um, bring on that internal incentive of this, I'm, I'm starting to feel good. I'm eating healthier. This, this feels really good. Um, so, you know, working with the convenience stores, also working with our farmers markets as well as another huge piece. Um, really Make, making the food available at the farmer's market accessible and equitable to all. So we have a SNAP times two program um, and we accept benefits such as WIC um, elder coupons at our at our farmer's market as well. So To make it easier for maybe somebody who doesn't have the means to be able to get affordable, fresh fruits and vegetables. Now Absolutely. lastly, tell us about Clarksburg School. They've yeah. recently gotten an award and they're slowly I know, I know. working their way they're, to great They're chugging things. along fantastically. So. We, yesterday we celebrated um, the Peter R. Lee Healthy Communities Award, and it, it's, it's a statewide award um, given to healthy communities, whether it be a school, organization, you know, there, was, there was six different recipients, Clarks, Clarksburg recipients, Clarksburg being one of them. And they originally got the award for the whole biking to school effort, because that was started by eighth graders, and they did you know the work with the help of myself, the superintendent, and the principal of the school. And so they spent a year going to meetings, preparing presentations, um, creating criteria of what the kids need to do, creating, um, working with different partners to have some bike safety um, opportunities for the kids to take before they rode, and then getting public safety and different people on board for the actual, in May of 2013, we had our first bike to school day in 20 or so years that Clarksburg kids got to ride. And so from that, it, I mean, it wasn't just biking to school, it was just creating a healthier community, it was creating a partnership with the town that's now an amazing partnership that they've established. Um, it's that trail system behind the school and bringing on some partners to help that happen. They have what's called a gaga pit um, at the school, which provides an amazing opportunity for physical activity. They have been a big um, push in the local foods, you know, bringing them into Clarksburg, you know, and, and the food service director is like, I'll just do what I can, you know, I'll make the budget work to make that happen. And the next step is just bring this all to Northern Berkshire. Thank you yeah. so much, Amanda Chilson. Yeah, thank, thank you. you.